I could have been somebody. Welcome to Defining Cinema, where I take a movie from each decade, and we'll discuss how this feature defines that decade, not only cinematically, but also philosophically and culturally. For our first episode, we'll be talking about Enter the Dragon, which defined the future of cinema and was way ahead of the curve in many aspects. A lot of the incredible impact of this film was thanks to the persistence of the film's star, Bruce Lee. First, we'll take a look at Enter the Dragon's cinematic impact. This was Hollywood's first martial arts picture. As it stands, leagues above all other martial arts pictures that came out prior to it, as well as it was at least a decade ahead in quality over all other martial arts cinema. That statement is only debatable by other greats in cinematic history, like Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai and Sanjuro, two movies often considered separate from the martial art genre due to their country of origin being Japan, not Hong Kong. Cinematically, Enter the Dragon stands apart from its Hong Kong counterparts because of its emphasis its producers and crew had on great filmmaking. Enter the Dragon had a great score, initially scored by Lao Shifrin, the composer of the Mission Impossible soundtrack. Oh, don't hit that. Additionally, it has great cinematography, great editing, great sound design. <laughs> great production design, costuming, and a deep story with philosophical roots. Also, it had a great performance by its lead, Bruce Lee, who in many ways is thanks to the inception of its film, who not only became a viable star for this film by becoming one of the most famous people on the planet, but also created an entirely new style of martial arts movie that strives for a grounded realism with believable action and relatable feats. Prior to Bruce, excessive wire work was commonplace, as well as a system of fight choreography that evolved from the early days of cinema that is paired with the elements of Peking fighting opera. Although these movies took an incredible amount of acrobatic skill to put together, global appreciation for it was hard to come by. The entire world was exposed to a style of cinema which had a much higher quality of aesthetic. The US was exporting movies all over the world and this aesthetic was not nearly achieved by Hong Kong cinema. The world saw Hong Kong cinema as more of a circus performance than a story to sit through for two hours. Without the matching quality of their US counterparts, Hong Kong movies could not compete in the global market. But when Bruce Lee hit Hong Kong cinema with The Big Boss, it immediately broke the record for biggest box office release in Hong Kong, which at the time was The Sound of Music. After that, the record was nearly doubled with Fist of Fury, and again broken with Way of the Dragon. At this point, Bruce had enough success and clout to start making things happen. In coordination with Golden Harvest Studios, Bruce was producing Game of Death, but all that had to be put on pause when Bruce Lee was connected with Robert Klaus. Golden Harvest EP Raymond Chow spearheaded an effort to get Enter the Dragon made, and Bruce Lee helped co-write the movie with Michael Allen. Enter the Dragon is truly an amalgamation of both Eastern and Western production styles. There was a big language barrier on set and there was huge cultural differences in terms of the cinematic craft. These differences in cinematic approach still exist somewhat today, but it pales in comparison to the enormous difference that once existed. There were a couple of times everything almost completely fell apart, but if it weren't for Bruce's leadership and cultural understanding of both American and Hong Kong production styles, Enter the Dragon may never have made it to release. But risk, diplomacy, and patience paid off. Enter the Dragon was a huge box office success, having cost only $850,000 to make and making a total of $90 million in its first run in theaters, Enter the Dragon is one of the most financially successful movies of all time. This of course exposed the West to martial arts for the first time, which led to a huge wave of kung fu movies that lasted nearly two decades in Hollywood. Sadly, a lot of what Hollywood wanted to do was imitate Bruce Lee. Producers believed it was Bruce Lee's mannerisms and physical strength that made it all work. So Hollywood and even Hong Kong made a lot of terrible attempts of cloning Bruce Lee and things fell way short. 
thought of. The Bruce Lee imitation attempts that came out in Hollywood and Hong Kong in the 1970s were so bad that Bruce Lee, like martial artists, were often seen as parodies. He thinks he's Bruce Lee! And those parodies are often seen even to this day. Daniel! Wanna fight, huh? But that's really sad because what made Enter the Dragon an excellent picture wasn't its cinematic quality or even Bruce Lee's incredible prowess and intense personality, but there's an incredible amount of subtext and metaphorical content in Enter the Dragon that often gets overlooked by audiences and creators. If Bruce Lee hadn't passed away, he could have spent a lot more time educating the West of the true meaning of martial arts and expressed the importance of having a philosophical foundation in martial arts cinema. But luckily, there is another wonderful connection that was made in Enter the Dragon. One of Hong Kong's greatest action choreographers, Sammo Hung, was a coordinator in Enter the Dragon, and thanks to this, he brought action superstars Yuan Bao and, of course, Jackie Chan on board for this picture. Even if the remainder of the 1970s was filled with cheesy martial arts pictures, thanks to the connection that was made in Enter the Dragon, the likes of the incredible martial arts pictures of the 1980s and 1990s produced by Sammo, Yuen and Jackie came to be. Of course, martial arts movies are now far from the hokey chop saki pictures of the 1970s, but even with the gritty realistic nature of modern day martial arts cinema, they still rarely touch the philosophical elements Bruce Lee wrote in Enter the Dragon. Which brings us to the next level of impact brought about by Enter the Dragon, its philosophical impact.